Hey guys, Mr. B here, and uh, making you another lovely math video. Uh, this one I'm going to give you one of the, uh, you know, pain in the butt optimization questions in calculus. So, uh, just doing one of these in class the other day with my students, so I thought I might do a little one that's a little bit different than the one we did, just to give them a little heads up. So, generally how these work is you got like a poster. I'm making this up off the top of my head, so whether it works or not, we'll find out. And then we have... Uh, there's some type of uh, border going around the poster. And uh, I'm going to make the border not uniform. So I'm going to call that 2 centimeters. I'm going to call this 1 centimeter. Call this uh, 1.5 centimeters. And I'll call this 1 centimeter as well. And I'm going to call this printed area in here 200 centimeters squared. So, what I want to do is I want to find uh, the dimensions of the poster. So, the dimensions that give the largest printed area. So I want to find the dimensions that give the largest printed area. So in order to that, I need to get some dimensions here. So I'm going to call this whole distance here y, and this entire distance here x. So what I can do from here is uh, with every optimization question, I need two formulas. So, well, generally I need two formulas. Any optimization question that's going to be on a calculus final needs two formulas. So uh, the first one's pretty easy. So if I have this guy, I have area... Oh. I forgot to tell you, this 200 centimeters is actually for the entire poster. Um, that wouldn't make sense if it was inside. So, uh, the area of the poster, the total is 200 centimeters. Alright? First mistake, I don't want to hear it in the comments. Uh, or in class. So, area, 200 centimeters. I'm just joking, you can comment all you want. Um, comment, please, yes, make, make fun of my mistakes. So, this total area is in the entire thing. I, for, I forgot that's what I had planned. Okay, so... Uh, my first formula would be 200 is equal to x times y. If I had said this 200 was in here, then it kind of is just like the one I did in class. So I want to make a difference. So the one we had in class gave the printed area. This one I got want the whole entire area. All right, so 200 times x, uh, x times y. So that is the to total area. So now the inner area is the next thing we're going to look for. So this inner area is... Uh, going to be my main formula because this is what I want the largest printed area. So that area is equal to, so if I look at this, I need this dimension and this dimension. So this, I know this entire dimension is x, but then I can subtract each one of those. So, so x minus 2, so 1 on each side. And then I have y subtract 2, subtract 1.5. So y subtract 3.5. So obviously I got something going on here where I have three variables, A, which I need, X, and Y. So I have to choose between X and Y. So that's why we need always need two, because we need one of these that we rearrange. So I'm going to call that Y is equal to 200 over X. So generally I just plug this guy right in here. So area is equal to X minus 2, and 200 over X minus 3.5. So... Anytime you're doing, so there's my formula, it has just x in it and a. Anytime you're doing a max or min question optimization, you need to think uh, first derivative equal to zero. So we need to find a prime and set it equal to zero. So in order to find a prime here, I'm going to use the product rule. So I have f times g. So my product rule, for those of you who don't remember, is f prime g plus g prime f or something like that. In that order, you can put change it around. So a prime, so my f prime is just 1. So the derivative of x minus 2 is just 1. And then times the deriv uh, times g, which is 200 over x minus 3.5, plus g prime. So g prime is a little more complicated, so I got the 200 over x, which is the same as 200 x to the minus 1, so the derivative of this, negative 200, so the negative 1 comes down in front, and then I'm left with x to the minus 2, which is the same as negative 200 over x squared, so that will be 200 
over x squared. Derivative of 3.5, just one, so or just nothing, so I don't need to put it in there. Times my f, which is x minus 2. So I'll simplify it a little bit. So I got 200 over x minus 3.5. Then I'll distribute here, so I have uh, positive. I forgot my negative to write it in there. Yeah, there's my negative. So negative 200 over, so these this times this, so 200, negative 200 x squared times x. So the x's cancel, and I have one x left. And then I multiply this by 2, so negative times negative is positive, so plus 400 over x squared. So you can see, voila. Really nice. You get something that works out pretty good. So 400 x squared minus 3.5. So there it is. There's my derivative. So that's a really important step. So like I said before, when you're thinking about these things, you need to set your first derivative equal to zero and find what are called the critical numbers. Right? So the critical numbers. So I do that. So zero is equal to 400 over x squared minus 3.5. So I can take that 3.5 over and I'm left with 400 over x squared. So then what I like to do is just switch spots. Anytime I have a variable on the bottom, something on the other side. So x squared is equal to 400 divided by 3.5. So then I can take the square root of this. So when you're taking the square root, you're thinking plus or minus. But you don't need to for this because these are act x is an actual length. So obviously, well, x is an actual length. My sincere apologies. x is an actual length. I said that four times. So you don't need to worry about the negative. It's obviously not going to be a, a number. It's not going to count, right? It's going to be a number, but it's not going to be a... It's, it's an extraneous solution, pretty much, right? So I get, when I do the math on that, you're somewhere in the ballpark about... So there's my about symbol. So about 10.7 uh, centimeters. So that's my x value. So now I need to go ahead and prove that that is indeed a max value. So what I'll do is I will put... 10.7 on a number line with a prime. So what all I want to do is figure if this is plus or this is minus and see what's happening. So I go back to my original derivative and I pick a number in here. So I'll pick 1. So 400 divided by 1 squared is 400 minus 3.5 is a positive number. I don't need the actual value. I just need to know if it's positive or negative. So if I choose a number in here, say 100, so I'd have 400 divided by 100 squared, which would be really close to zero. Subtract that, so that's going to be negative. So what I have happening is the graph is increasing, then it goes from decreasing. So in order for that to happen, what's happening at 10.7 must be a max. So max is at x is equal to 10.7. So I just need the corresponding y value. So in order to get that, I'll go back up here and use this formula. y is equal to 200 divided by x. So 200 divided by 10.7. And I think that's probably close to about 18.7 centimeters. I forgot my centimeters on here. So there it is. So there's my x value and my y value that give me the largest area. So if you actually wanted to find the area, well, we know what it is. It's 200, right? So 10.7 times 18.7 and that should be about 200 centimeters so it's not exactly what it's about there um, so if you want to actually find if the question asks for the dimensions of the inside part you can go ahead and put it back into your, this original formula x and y and actually whoop, this original formula x and y and actually figure it out so guys, this isn't a great example of a question that could be on a calculus placement test or any type of thing. My students are getting ready to write a calculus placement test. So I hope that helped. Uh, keep up the good work, and I'll see you guys in class.